Hello there and welcome to Nightline. I'm Brandon Wong. The headlines. Another 22 Pulau Pinang JPJ enforcement officers nabbed. And lawmakers top civil servants to be compelled to declare assets. Good morning. Malaysia will only succeed in becoming a developed nation if there is a balance between physical development and environmental stable sustainability in the country's growth. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad also reminded all quarters that environmental preservation is as important as efforts to develop the country's economy and society. In his speech at the Earth Day celebration at Taman Tugu Negara, the Prime Minister pointed out that conserving the environment is not only an individual responsibility, but a collective effort that must be carried out continuously, regardless of any circumstances. Kita telah melihat kesan akibat daripada pembangunan yang tidak teratur dan hanya menekankan faktor keuntungan semata-mata. Perlu kita sedari usaha Kita untuk menjadikan sebuah negara maju tidak akan tercapai atau ditiraf jika apa yang boleh kita perlihatkan adalah bangunan-bangunan pencakar langit tetapi sungai-sungai kita tercemar, hutan belantara kita hanya tinggal tanah dan yang tandus dan udara yang kita hirup teruk Tun Dr. Mahathir also said the Taman Tugu Negara is a testament to the government's commitment to embracing a balance between physical development and environmental sustainability. The Taman Tugu project is a non-profit corporate social responsibility initiative led by Kazana National Burhad with the support of various public agencies and private sector organizations. Apart from turning the site into an urban forest park, the project also aims to encourage Malaysians to protect the national heritage. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, has arrested another 22 Pulau Pinang JPJ enforcement officers believed to be involved in the lorry driver's protection racket. The men aged between 32 and 55 were arrested at the state MACC office between 11 a.m. and 4.15 p.m. on Saturday. According to sources, all of them were believed to have received a monthly payment of 10,000 ringgit in total. Sources also said it was suspected that the accumulated amount received by this group has reached 140,000 ringgit to date. MACC Deputy Chief Commissioner Dato Sri Azabaki confirmed the arrest. Meanwhile, the MACC will call on the Pulau Pinang JPJ director and its top management to assist in investigation into corruption cases involving the department officers if necessary. Dr. Sri Azam said the state JPJ senior officers suspected of involvement in the case will be called in only after the process of recording statements from the detained officers have been completed. Saya tidak tolak kemungkinan lah pertamanya nak manggil pihak-pihak pegawai kanan daripada JPJ uh, tetapi uh, uh, mereka ni biasanya kita akan panggil uh, selepas kita panggil pegawai-pegawai yang disyaki dahulu dan selepas kita mengumpulkan bukti itu satu proses yang biasa uh, beberapa pengesahan kalau kita perlu kita akan panggil pegawai-pegawai kanan yang terlibat. On Wednesday, the Georgetown Magistrates Court ordered 30 suspects, including 24 state JPJ enforcement personnel, to be remanded for seven days to assist in the probe. They were allegedly involved in protecting lorry drivers who committed various traffic offences around Pulau Pinang. Earlier reports said that the detained JPJ officers, bearing ranks between grade 19 and 32, were believed to have received monthly payments of between 10,000 and 32,000 ringgit for protecting the lorry drivers. All members of parliament and senior civil servants under the JUSA C grade and above will be compelled to declare their assets. MACC Deputy Chief Commissioner of Prevention, Datuk Shamsun Bahrain Muhammad Jamil said the new legislation was in the proposal stage. Datuk Samshun said the new law, when adopted, would be expanded to include opposition members of parliament and state assemblymen. He said the MACC is completing the bill's final draft, which is expected to be concluded by year end. Etika itu tidak kira akan membuat mereka dikenakan tindakan undang-undang sekiranya mereka tidak apa tu berbuat demikian. 
dia hanya lah ikutlah politik saja so dia tak ada force of law tu sebab itu yang kita mencadangkan supaya adanya satu undang-undang yang khusus berhubung perkara itu Datuk Shamsun said this at the Inland Revenue Board Social Responsibility Program in Pahang on Saturday. He said the initiative to introduce the legislation came following Pakatan Harapan's move to make it compulsory for its members of parliament and government administrative personnel to submit their asset declaration to the MACC. Cost of living allowance and advanced loan payments for Felder settlers amounting to 1,500 ringgit will continue. Economic Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali said the decision was concluded in Parliament recently following several discussions held with Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. Speaking in a press conference after visiting the Felder New Generation Housing Project in Negeri Sembilan on Saturday, Datuk Sri Azmin said the Felder Board of Directors had earlier proposed that such payments be reduced in view of Felder's critical financial situation. But the idea was rejected when the matter was brought up to Tun Dr. Mahathir as the Prime Minister felt that it could put a further strain on the settlers, especially with the current economy situation. During the press conference, Datu Sri Muhammad Azmin also said that 5,000 units of new generation Felder houses across the country which achieved 70% construction status and above would be completed this year, involving a cost of 250 million ringgit. Felda telah pun bersetuju untuk menyediakan 90 juta ringgit bagi menyiapkan 839 unit rumah di kawasan ini mulai uh, tahun ini juga dan dalam tempoh yang telah ditetapkan kita perlu siapkan rumah-rumah yang uh, berkenaan. Datuk Sri Azmin, who was on a one-day working visit to the state, also briefed settlers attending the program on the Felda White Paper. The people must be given a clear understanding of the position of the Malay rulers, which has been enshrined in the federal constitution, to ensure that they do not insult the institution. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, P. Wedamurti, said the people need to know the role of the king and Malay rulers so that they get a better understanding to maintain peace and harmony in the country. He added no one should raise any issues related to the constitution which can hurt the rulers. The minister also said that the people should be cautious when using social media, as anything raised in the medium could affect the unity and solidarity of the people. The police will open an investigation under the police inquiry paper with regards to a viral video of a closed-circuit TV camera recording of proceedings on the trial of former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Najib Tun Razak, which was uploaded onto the Facebook social network. Kuala Lumpur Police Chief Datuk Sri Maslan Lazim said prior to that, the police would make a first information report, FIR, on the investigation as no one had come forward to lodge a report so far. On Friday, a video titled Fifth Day of Datuk Sri Najib's Trial showed the recording of Datuk Sri Najib's Defence Council, Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, questioning a witness, which went viral on the social website. It was learned that the recording was uploaded via the account of Datuk Sri Najib's former special officer, Isham Jalil, and has been viewed more than 227,000 times. The government's plan to reduce the size of the civil service will not affect the policy of having 1% participation by the disabled or OKU. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail, who revealed this, assured that posts reserved for OKUs in the public sector would be maintained. Speaking to reporters after officiating the Malaysian Association for the Blind Excellence Award Ceremony in Petaling Jaya Selangor on Saturday, Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza said the government was currently focused on meeting the 1% quota for OKU before planning on increasing it. Kita nakkan uh, ramai lagi sekarang sebab belum lagi penuh kan. Uh, jadi kita nakkan untuk tempat-tempat yang boleh, yang khusus untuk OKU itu, di uh, preserve lah. Uh. Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza said various efforts were also being taken by the government to encourage the private sector to hire OKUs, including tax exemption for employers on expenditure to meet their needs. As of the end of last year, some 3,800 OKUs, or 0.31%, were appointed to a range of positions in the civil service. 
The federal government has not decided anything on compensation sought by state governments for their forest and wildlife reserves that are used as water catchment areas. Water, Land and Natural Resources Minister Dr. A. Xavier Jayakumar said all state governments have stated that they want compensation from the federal government with regards to the matter. All the state governments want compensation. Uh, whether we will be able to, to, to give them the compensation is a different question. Uh, yesterday we discussed that uh, there are other ways in order for the federal government to look into compensation as far as the state is concerned, especially in terms of the forest industry. And we also have plans in order to have plantation forests and forest industry to continue. He was commenting on the Pahang government's plan to seek more than 17 billion ringgit in compensation from the federal government for the forest and wildlife reserves in the state used as water catchment for the benefit of people outside Pahang. Pahang Mantri Basar, Datu Sri Wan Rosti Wan Ismail said the land involved covered 1 million hectares and this forced the state government to bear high opportunity cost. Dr Xavier said there are other ways to resolve the issue, especially in terms of the forest industry. These include forest plantations, which are already a very lucrative business and can serve as a new economy for the states. That the Zamriman will be removed as Ipo mayor after going absent without leave or AWOL for months. Para Exco member Yong Chu Kyung said that Zamri, who he understood to be unwell, however, had only submitted his sick leave for two months, but has been missing from work for more than three months. Yu also said he had visited Datu Zamri's home but could not find him. It was reported that Datu Zamri, who was appointed as Ipo mayor in 2015, was last seen in public at a cycling event in August last year. According to the law, a mayor or a council president is eligible to take up to 90 days of sick leave. In Selangor, a 19-year-old teenager died when the motorcycle he was riding brushed with a lorry carrying soil, causing him to be dragged 100 meters on Saturday. According to police, the accident occurred at the Guthrie Highway from Sungai Bulu to Shah Alam at about 1.45 a.m. The victim, Muhammad Yusuf Sahul Hamid from Kampung Payajara, Sungai Bulu, was believed to be on his way to Shah Alam. A seven-member team from the Kota Angrik Bukit Jalutong Fire and Rescue Department rushed to the scene to extricate the victim. Muhammad Yusuf's body was brought to Hospital Sungai Bulo for post-mortem and the lorry driver has been detained to have his statement recorded. Also in Sulango, a motorcyclist died after his motorcycle was believed to be involved in an accident with a lorry at the Kasas Highway heading to Shah Alam on Friday night. In the 12th midnight incident, the victim, M. Gobinathan, 31, from Klang, was pronounced dead at the scene due to severe head injuries. According to police, he was said to have rammed a vehicle from behind at Jalan Pelabuhan Barat before he fell. Another vehicle, which was behind him, was not able to avoid running over him, causing the victim to be dragged 150 meters. His body was brought to the Tengku Ampuan Rahima Hospital in Klang for post-mortem. We're going for a short break. Stay tuned for Nightline's eSports segment. It's time for our eSports segment, bringing you the latest eSports news in Malaysia. As the Southeast Asian Games draws closer, the race is on to select the eSports athletes who will represent Malaysia in the biennial games. To help prepare athletes, competitions including the FV Cup C Major 2019 are held for players in the Malaysian fighting games community to help them prepare for the regional games. One Izul Islam has more. The Malaysian fighting games community has been growing over the past few years and as you can see behind me, the players here have come in full support for the FV Cup XC Major 2019. Now the question is, will they be ready for the upcoming SEA Games in Manila, Philippines? I'm here to find out more. Let's go. The tournament not only provided a platform for the Malaysian fighting games community, MyFGC, to train, but also allowed professional players to earn valuable points on the Capcom Pro Tour. 
With the support of over 200 esports players, the event saw many local players competing with star gamers from Japan, Algeria, China, and Taiwan, amongst others. However, training and gaining experience through tournaments will not suffice for players wishing to represent their countries on the international arena. Tapi mereka juga memerlukan sokongan daripada banyak pihak untuk menyediakan untuk penyediaan diri mereka untuk ke sana. Mereka perlukan bantuan dari segi uh, coaching, dari segi logistik dan semua-semua ini akan bantu mereka untuk menyediakan diri mereka untuk bertanding dan juga mendapat keputusan yang lebih lebih tinggi. They are always ready if they are given the correct platform, they given uh, the correct support, uh, the correct okay in overall sponsorship like meals, flight tickets, accommodation, training platform, training room. They are there, they are ready, they are just waiting for that. As the Malaysian contingent prepares the esports athletes by conducting state trials and competitions, international exposure is needed to help with moral support of the players. We are hoping they could get gold medal from, from back from Sea Games, but uh, the competition is quite tough actually in the sea, I mean, in the Southeast Asia region. So whatever support they need, I think when it comes to uh, the community, they really need a moral support. Other than that, if we could uh, send them more over to international, international tournaments, they could go get more experience. So that's how they could improve. With esports being featured for the first time in a multi-sport competition sanctioned by the International Olympic Committee, first impressions will be key to ensuring the future of esports on the international stage. Apart from the fighting game Tekken 7, there are four other confirmed titles for the SEA Games, namely Dota 2, StarCraft 2, Mobile Legends and Arena of Valor. One is on Islam for Nightline's eSports segment, Diga. Malaysia will not rule out the possibility of bidding to host the first ever Mobile Legends World Cup, which will be held in a Southeast Asian country. Game developer Moon Ton, however, has not revealed the actual date of the World Championship or whether it will be hosted before or after the SEA Games at the end of the year. Youth and Sports Minister Said Sadiq Said Abdul Rahman confirmed that his ministry, along with the National Sports Council, will do their best to bring the inaugural championship to Malaysia. Organizers of the World Cup have also yet to decide on the official name of the championship. However, it was confirmed that the competition will involve the four biggest regions, namely the United States, South America, Europe and Southeast Asia. Mobile Legends is a multiplayer online mobile arena game developed and published by Munton in 2016. The game is also one of six esports categories to be contested in the upcoming 2019 SEA Games. <laughs> vote and referendum aimed at extending CC's rule to 2030. Don't go away. On to the foreign front. In Afghanistan, at least seven people were killed in an hour-long multi-pronged assault by suicide bombers and gunmen at the Communications Ministry building in Kabul on Saturday. According to authorities, the assault began at 11.40 local time when a bomber blew himself up outside the entrance, clearing the way for other attackers to enter the building. There were four attackers in total, all of whom were eventually shot dead by policemen after a six-hour-long gunfight. Among the dead were four civilians and three policemen. About 2,000 people were feared to have been stranded inside for hours until they were eventually freed. The attack came a day after talks collapsed between the Taliban and Afghan representatives, but no one claimed immediate responsibility. Egyptians have begun voting in a referendum on proposed constitutional amendments that could see President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's rule extended to 2030 and military roles broadened. Some 55 million of Egypt's nearly 100 million population are eligible to cast votes in the referendum, which will be held over three days starting on Saturday. Egypt's 596-member parliament, dominated by Sisi supporters, approved the amendments on Tuesday, voting by 531 to 22 in favour of the constitutional changes. The amendment include allowing the general turned president to extend his current term by two years and stand for another six years' mandate while boosting his control over the, judici the judiciary and giving the military even greater influence in political life.
The referendum backs the trend of the region's mini Arab Spring, in which mass pro democracy protests this month swept, avo swept away veteran presidents in Algeria and Sudan. The ballot will also see voters decide on whether an upper parliamentary chamber should be, ch should be created. Opposition parties have called on voters to reject the changes seen by critics as a step backwards to authoritarian rule eight years after pro-democracy uprising. <clears throat> United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo vowed on Friday that Washington would keep talking, would, take, would keep taking tough action on Russia after Special Counsel Robert Mueller's 400-page report was released publicly on Thursday. According to the report, there have been widespread attempts by Moscow to help elect Donald Trump as the 45th President of the United States. We'll talk about the... Uh, steadfast requirement that Russia not engage in activity that impacts the capacity of our democracy to be successful and their interference in our election uh, creates risk there and we will make very clear to them this is unacceptable behavior and as you've seen from this administration we will take tough actions. Pompeo said that the U.S. would also keep pressing to stop the Kremlin from intervening in other elections around the world. Trump has spoken of a fondness for Russian President Vladimir Putin, who has openly said he favored the populist mogul to his Democratic rival in the 2016 election, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The Mueller report supported Trump's repeated assertions that he never colluded with Russian intelligence to sway the election, although it left open the question of whether he obstructed justice. In Peru, at least eight people died and 45 others injured on Friday after a bus on its way to the burial of former President Alan Garcia crashed into a highway median wall. According to authorities, the accident occurred on the Pan American Highway in Huaura, some 150 kilometers north of Lima. Authorities confirmed that the delegation from the American Popular Revolutionary Alliance political party was traveling on the bus to attend the funeral of the former president. The bus carrying 53 passengers was reportedly traveling from Piura when it veered from its lane before crashing into the retaining wall of a bridge. It is understood that five passengers who were traveling on the upper deck were thrown from the bus and died after landing on rocks in a riverbank creek below the highway. The cause of the accident is still under investigation. Stay tuned. Sports football, the Super League. Four matches were played on Saturday night. Johor Darul Takzim beat PKNS FC 3-1. Bahang H Pera 1-0. Slango recorded a 2-1 win over PKNP, while Kuala Lumpur claimed their second win of the season by beating Pataling Jaya City FC 1-0. In Chiras, both teams proved a hard nut to crack in the first half as it ended 0-0. The host finally broke the deadlock five minutes after the break thanks to Ashraf Chuchu's strike to make it 1-0. PJC FC then pushed on for the equaliser, but the scoreline remained until the full-time whistle. Despite the win, the City Boys remain at the bottom of the table with seven points after nine matches.
And that's it for Nightline this time around. In Vietnam, more than 130 participants show off their colorful homemade kites during a centuries-old flute kites festival at the Ba Dung Noi village in Hanoi. Let's take a look. I'm Brandon Wong.